basic as possible, but it's really hard because I just want to give you guys all the information, but um, I guess we'll do this in, once you guys start closing deals, a lot of it will start all coming together, but um, I'm going to just basically go over how everything works on the financial side um, for your business. So the whole focus really is um, to build a financially sound business. So that's what we're going to focus on today. My career as far as financials go is I have a very long background. So I've summed it up for you guys. Um, I've been a CFO and MCA for over 12 years um, in real estate in particular. Um, I have four years as a team financial manager with Busy Blondes. Um, Busy Blondes is a real estate group. Let me close my door. Um, Busy Blondes is a real estate group in West Side LA. Um, so that's Southern California. That's where I've been predominantly. And I have eight years of escrow financial manage, manager. So I've handled escrow financials and I've launched over seven real estate brokerages. I'm a real estate investor. So I have multiple properties that I've invested in and um, rent out. And I'm an investor at KW Pacific Estates since 2011. So I have um, ownership in a chain of uh, brokerages. So, and I have handled all the financials for those. So that was four market centers, about a thousand agents and about 4 billion in sales. So I've managed a lot. <laughs> All right, so like I said, the, the goal today is to teach you the habits to build a financial sound business. Um, we'll be employing techniques and models used by the most successful real estate agents for managing how each commission check is handled and how we can use our money to build bright future for ourselves in real estate. So here's a little timeline that Ignite gives you. First thing is, is habits. Keller Williams is known for its models and its systems and technology. So naturally KW offers powerful tools driven by technology to help pursue your personal business goals. Use the proven models and tools out of the MREA book to have a smart financial business. So the question would be, why do you think these habits are important? Well, it's because many agents confuse income with profit. They're two separate things. Don't save for and pay taxes on time. Don't make use of the powerful tools available to them and don't understand their financials and just wing it. And don't plan for regular monthly salary, or, and, which is a big thing because agents just thinks once you get your check, that's your salary. That is not true. And um, we need to make sure that you prepare for your financial security. Um, this is a quote from Gary Keller. It's money is good for the good it can do. So what is the purpose of business? Can anybody answer that for me? What is the purpose of business? Anybody wanna take a shot? Profit. The whole point of getting a business is to gain profit, not income, profit. So, and with profit, you have money to do things with your family and your community. So when you set your goals, you can become keenly aware of how many transactions you need to close to reach your financial goals. This is the money you'll use to fund your big life and to do all the things that you want to do. So today we'll be talking about your financial sound business practices that you can incorporate into your business from the start with every transaction you close. This begins with understanding how the money you make from each transaction can contribute to the financially sound or unsound business. So now we're gonna dive right into it. So this is financially sound versus an unsound business. So on the left, um, this is basically an example that we created. It's, let's say this is, um, we'll call this agent Jessica, okay? So on the left side, Jessica received the commission. Then after
after all of what we call cost of sales, which is splits, we'll go over that later in, in the class, but then there's a cost of sales, which is all the splits that are being pushed out, whether it's referral or with the office, or if you're on a team. And so then what you end up receiving is your income, which is 5,760. And most agents put that and deposit that right into their personal bank account. They don't put any money away for their business. They don't put any money away for taxes. Because remember, you're a 1099. So you are responsible for paying your own taxes. It is not taken out for you. So on the right, you're going to see that. Here, let me move that thing so you can see it. So on the right, this is how you will structure your commission checks. So when Jessica sold um, her deal and she received 9,000 in, in what we call gross commission income, then she, after all the cost of sales, she received $5,760. Then you, post, you put 30% towards your business expenses. This is all off of the MREA book if you've read it. And then the remaining goes to your personal bank account. But then I did it very, a very high tax bracket. I did 40%. That is the safest thing you could do. Um, so then you would take 40% and you would split it up for your taxes. So overall, what was in your wallet to spend in, in what we would call your salary is $2,419. So remember, you have to pay taxes. When that end of the year comes and you're not, you're gonna get a big, huge bill and you're not gonna be happy. And then your 2022 commission is not just paying for your taxes for that year, but also for the previous year. So you're double paying. You just don't wanna get yourself in that mess. So it's better to just track it now. So a financially sound business example, this is one transaction, $9,000 commission, cost of sales has been paid out. So you receive in total income, not profit, total income is 5,760. And then your net profit after expenses and taxes are 2,419. Should make sense. So this is what we're aiming for with this class is for you to understand and embrace the smart model that grows in your business, pays your taxes and funds your life. So let me give you an example of an agent um, that I had experience with in Long Beach. Um, he, he started out in his first year. Um, he was young, I think he was maybe about 23. He ended up attacking his sphere and then he started doing door knocking and he became extremely successful. Well, what ended up happening was he made over $300,000 that year in total income. What he didn't do is he didn't pay taxes or put enough money away for his business because then the following year he didn't do so well. So now he was paying back taxes and he was paying for the expenses for that year and the taxes that he received for all the commissions on that current year. So he ended up actually becoming more in debt than more profitable in his business and it hurt him um, I heard him a lot. So I highly recommend you don't do that. Any questions so far? No? Okay. You guys are easy. So next is the MREA models. So we're going to go over those. So this one is the economic model. So economic model, which I'm hoping, I haven't been to all the Ignite classes, so I apologize. But, um, so I don't know if they went over the economic model, but I'm sure they have. Um, the economic model is basically the structure of, of 
how to basically manage your business and what you need to do in order to hit your goals. So the MREA economic model, this is off, like I said, the MREA book. So if you've read it, you're very well aware of this. So income is your gross commission income. So every time you hear gross commission, it's all the gross, all the money that came in from the sale. So if you had a $2 million house and you received 2.5% in commission, then that amount is your gross commission. And then the expenses off of that immediately, which is what me and Leslie process, or any of your guys' office managers process is your cost of sales. And those are all the splits. So all the splits are the referrals to the office, which is your cap. And if you're on a team to your team members. And then after that, you're, you should be paying your in a separate bank account or splitting it somehow where you're managing it properly on your P&Ls you should be setting aside 30% for your expenses. And then your net profit or net income should be 40%. So that is the way you should do it based on the MREA that was created by a ton of amazing agents. Now in your first years of the business, it's not gonna look like this because you're gonna probably have a little bit more um, expenses rather than revenue, but that's, that's where you, some agents get out of the business faster than they came in is because they start signing up for all these, these things and these services, and you end up having these, this huge expense, but now you're leading with expenses and not profit. So, and what we call is revenue, which is one of Gary Keller's, you know, list of things of um, to do, which is lead with revenue, not expenses. So you don't want to get yourself wrapped up in all that. And like we call it the shiny objects. Don't sign up for all these shiny objects. Keep things simple in your first year or two. Um, only do and purchase things that are a need, not a want. Um, because you're going to need to keep your expenses as extremely low. So then you can have a profit to fund yourself for the next year. So here's the economic model. So what we did was there's a spreadsheet that has been created. Um, I know that, come on. I know that the Long Beach or the Long Beach, the Santa Clara office has um, given this out to the agents. I don't know about Silicon City, but I'm gonna make sure that you guys get this link if it would work. It's okay. Let me show you right here. Darn, it's not working. Nope. Okay, guys, well, that's not very helpful. But basically, the economic model, it's a spreadsheet that goes over all of your numbers. So you just plug in what your net income is, and it breaks it all down for you. So it tells you how many units that you should need to close for each side, whether it's buyer and seller, how many leads you need to generate, how much you need to convert, what basically your percentage of conversion, and then your average sales price. And it goes through all these matrix, and it basically calculates everything for you. You plug in a few number numbers, and it breaks it all down for you. And then you add over to the right side of the spreadsheet your budget sheet sheet and it will calculate that into it so you can see what your net income would be. It's really amazing. I love it. So I will give you guys those links so then you can have it because clearly right now that's not working and I'm not going to waste your time trying to figure it out. Any question? Oh, Rick, you have a question. How about taxes? What can you write 
off on them. Taxes, okay, so when it comes to your taxes, you need to be very mindful that everything you spend on your business, this is why you need to keep two separate biz, um, bank accounts because you wanna be able to have a like a credit card or a debit card and checks that you write only for your business because those all become business expenses. Um, as far as when it comes to commission, anytime you're giving, a, you're paying for the agent's termite inspections or concessions or closing costs, any of that stuff, it becomes something where you can write up your TCs. You should be 1099 your TCs at the end of the year. So you can write those off as a business expense. But as far as taxes go, it's pretty simple. It's keep everything and all your expenses into one bank statement, especially if you get audited. Um, if you have everything commingled, that is like red flags for the IRS. They are going to get you. So you want to keep things separate so where you can hand them a bank statement and you have all the expenses listed right there. So, and it's not that much. You just get a separate checking account and you just fund yourself that way and you move money that way and you pay yourself um, a salary and then it becomes super simple. If And then I people are going to automatically tell you, get incorporated. I don't recommend that. Once you get incorporated and you start signing yourself up for a corporation, that is so much work. And then you got to pay a tax preparer to do a K-1 for your corporation. It's just a lot more money because you automatically have to pay $800 just to, just to have the corporation. So don't get yourself all into that. If you're going to do something, just do a fictitious business name, very simple, and if anything, talk to your CPA, but I don't recommend you get incorporated unless you're closing a good like seven to eight transactions a year. I mean, maybe a little bit less like five, but nothing less than that. It's too much work and too much money. Any, uh, Leslie gives us a P&L spreadsheet. I'm pretty sure it's the same one you're using. Yes, Linda, it, it's. It's the same one that uh, Gary Keller uses in his classes. What the heck is my PowerPoint? Y'all, I am so sorry, because you know what? I'm not gonna lie to you guys right now. I am not a Mac person and they got me, I'm using this Mac and it is no bueno for me. I am a PC girl all the way. We'll just do this, oh, right here. Okay, that's fine. It's you fine. can learn, not a problem. They're really simple. I'm sure they are. It's because our systems are always like all of our accounting systems and stuff are more um, compatible with PC. So I'm a PC girl all the way. And these Macs are like a foreign language. But yes, I will send all these. And even the budget model, um, budget budget model spreadsheets i actually which um linda i don't think leslie has these um i have four different ones there's the simple one which is real straight to the point there's a mid-level one that's has a little bit more detail you put a little bit more detail in them the experienced one is it's it's like it's basically the one that i use to manage the big, huge seventh level team in uh, Southern California. And then the MREA is the chart of accounts. Those are all the accounts that you should have listed in your, if you hired a bookkeeper or you're doing it yourself, um, I have all the list of chart of accounts that you should have in there. So I'm gonna give you guys all these. We don't have to go over them now because that's something that you guys are gonna need to like really sit down and focus on um, to create your budgets. But I provided those for you. So basically, I gave you guys a shortcut to make it super simple for yourselves. Okay, let's talk about the flow of money. <laughs> Jackie, PC forever. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nancy. You're so sweet. Oh, let me go. Okay, so the flow of money. Okay, this is how it works. Income is what goes in. Expenses is what goes out. So profit is what's left over. So you really want to protect your income by making sure once again that your expenses are as low as, pos as possible. 
I have a success rate right now of every single one of the businesses that I've managed um, financially have all been ex extremely successful. In Southern California, all four of the offices that I was managing were all top 20 market centers in the entire Keller Williams um, franchise. And then the escrow company was number one in our um, city. And then the team that I was managing in Southern California was uh, awarded several times the number one group in the entire region. So I am a big fan of less is best. So I don't buy a bunch of stuff. I don't get myself wrapped up in monthly fees. Um, if you if you can afford it, like even these Zoom accounts, we had to pay for these Zoom accounts. It's just pay the year and be done. It's not these monthly things you get because those things start adding up like crazy. I, if it's not a need, don't purchase it or find ways to save yourself money. Um, an example, events. You know, I'm setting up an event here with for our Santa Clara office and I've already told the agents, don't spend money setting up your own events somewhere sometime anytime soon use our events as your own way of building relationships with agents so we're doing a movie night we ran out of theater we're we got a sponsor they're paying for it and now agents can literally you know invite their clients purchase tickets it all goes to charity they're five dollars a ticket and now you can build a relationship with every client that you want to invite and you can buy as many tickets as you want and we'll order as many theaters as we need to. But that's a way to leverage the expense of an event is by utilizing the office. So I, I try to educate the agents as much as possible on how to save money because there's just no reason why you, a lot of this stuff you have to use your money for. A vendors are a great example. I'm using vendors all the all the time. If anybody knows me or sees me in this office, they know these vendors are in here. We got a snack bar. I Agents wanted a snack bar. I'm not paying for a snack bar in this office. It can financially get crazy. So a vendor, our lovely, beautiful, wonderful Mabo, sponsors a, a snack bar for our office. It's like, I will find ways around not paying a bill. Let me tell you. And I think you should have the same mindset because you guys are a lot smaller scale in your first two years. You're not making as much money. So you got to make sure you cut corners as much as you can. All right, income. Income as your real estate business can really only come from a select number of sources. Listing income, sales income, referral income, and leasing income. That's pretty much your options when it comes to real estate, unless you're a commercial agent, then it would be commercial income, but it all still falls under listing income or sales income. But if you do residential and commercial, you can kind of basically do both. So that's another revenue source. But this is pretty much how you're driving income into your business is these four things. So it's it, when I say that because it's not it's a lot, but it's just narrowing your focus. You just focus on these things and you're just pounding the pavement and trying to drive as much of these income sources as possible. Easy, super easy. Okay, cost of sales, let's get into this. Okay, this is important. I'm going to educate my people here. Cost of sales is extremely important because that's what, that pretty much is what dictates your bottom line. I mean, that one you can really, really affect your bottom line with your cost of sales. For example, um, if you have um, a referral that comes in, a referral sounds great. And sometimes these referral agents that are referring you the deal are really good. And they're, they're oh, I've done most of the work. So let's do 40%. But then you end up doing a lot of the work. But besides the point, let's do 40%. Well, that 40% just now is taken is cost of sales. It's the percentage. So you have to be careful because that's going to affect dramatically your bottom line, which is standard referral fee is 25%. So now you have that basically that 15% of that you're losing. And, and, and if you keep that mindset, it's 
you're taking 15% off of your bottom line. So you always want to negotiate. Um, don't just accept things. There's always room for negotiation for everything. So I would highly recommend always negotiating yourself to a standard 25%. I feel like that's the win-win above them all is just keeping it 25%. Um, another cost of sales is things like um, if you're on a team, it's important that you realize and understand the splits between you and your rainmaker, or if you have a team, you've created one yourself, that you focus on what the splits are between you and your buyer's agent or listing agent, because the mindset you want to have with that is, is the value of what you're paying them worth it? And some agents will, if you're taking you know, splitting with them, you're the rainmaker and you're taking 70% and you're giving them 30%, you have to remember that they're also paying their towards their cap. So they're going to end up with pennies and that's not going to let want them, they're not going to want to stay with your team because they're not financially benefiting. It's not worth it. So you have to constantly question yourself on is the cost of sales worth it. When agents are taking 1% rather than 2.5% on a listing, you are cutting your bottom line big time. You know, that all comes out of cost of sales because that becomes a concession. So you have to track all of this because at the end of the year, you want to be able to look at your P&L and say, how much of my gross commission income went to cost of sales and to who and was it worth the money? And you know, they teach you in agent financials with um, with Mike Bastian. He always asks the agents, even when it comes to the splits with the office and your cats with the office, is the money that you paid to the office worth it? Are you getting the value for the money that you're paying? And you want to make sure you question that because that's coming off of your the top. So keep that in mind. I see a lot of questions coming in, so let me answer them. Um, what office is the instructor in? I am in Santa Clara, Rob. And then, um, oh, he'll answer. Loud and clear, I hear you. <laughs> um, breakdown is, okay, 40% taxes, 30%. Okay, so it's 30, okay, so 30% Rick goes to cost of sales, 30% goes to expenses, and then 40% is your profit. Out of the 40%, you want to take 40% of that towards taxes. Now, I highly recommend you talk to your CPA because your CPA is actually going to, or your tax preparer is actually going to tell you the actual percentage. I'm saying 40% as like worst case scenario. Um, but you want to talk to them so they could tell you if it's 22%, 27%, whatever. And that percentage is what you take out. But the 40% is what your net profit is. And then you split it for taxes and then your personal. Just, <laughs> you're so funny. Um, our office in Santa Clara gets a movie night. Um, I, I just talked to your, um, Rob, talk to your, to your office and maybe they could put one together or you, or my thing is, is you're more than happy to join our event. I mean, I, I don't, it's all for the agents and it all goes to charity. So it's all good. Rob, our age, oh, Hilda answered that. Um, Okay, and then 23% taxes. Yes, Rick, 23%, that's perfect. Pay that out of that 40% that you're supposed to have left over. Hopefully that answered that. Okay, now let's get into formulas. Now we're gonna get dive into the good stuff. All right, so I'm going to save yourselves a lot of this trouble of um, trying to guess what the numbers are because I actually just ended up creating um, some examples for you. So I don't know why it did that with the background, but oh well. Okay, so not capped yet. So this is what your demand would look like. So for some of you that haven't closed the deal, what ends up happening is you upload your file into command and on one of the tabs is a commission tab. And usually either your TC or yourself fills that out 
and it gives the, the MCAs, which is me and Leslie, a breakdown of all of your commission. Yes. I'm trying to full screen. I'm sorry. I don't know how to use the Mac and I don't know how to full screen this sucker. Let me see. Oh, here. Okay, here we go. So when you fill out the commissions tab in your command file, that is basically telling me and Leslie what the commission breakdown is gonna be. You're basically telling us. So if there's any concessions, deductions, the TCs will fill this out for you if you have one. But if you don't, you fill it out and it sales price, percentage of your gross commission, and it all calculates for you. And it even gives you in live time how much you've contributed to your cap. So, and then you put any deductions, which is if you have a TC, you pay out your TC. If anything, if you wanna to pay to 911 CARES, you could do that, it's all there. So if we use this example on the first page, the first page is the, it's like a general page. It's basically just showing escrow what the check amount should be. So if you are not capped, and I did this off of a 70-30 split, then Keller Williams Realty would receive 34,000 and agent would receive 69,000 if this was 103,500 gross commission. So this is, was an actual sale. This was one of our agents here. He had a $3.4 um, million dollar listing and this is what his gross commission was. Um, he's already capped, so I'm gonna show you what his thing looked like. But um, if you're not capped, this is what, how much would be paid to each person. Now, if you go to page two, this is how the breakdown works. You look at it from the left to the right. So you have the gross commission of 103,500. Then you move on down and you have a 70-30 split. So your associate com uh, commission after the 70-30 split, so your 70% is 72,450. Then you go to the associate royalty over to the right, at the top right. Now, associate royalty is actually 6% of the gross commission number, not the 72,450. So with that being said, it's actually it comes out to be about 6,000 and something but you cap at 3,000 on royalty. So it's just a straight 3,000 and then now you no longer pay the royalty. And then, so your net commission becomes 69,450, which is after the split and after the royalty. So that's cost of sales. So after cost of sales, you have 69,450. And then you'll see the little breakdown at the bottom, how much you contributed to company dollar, which is under the company commissions, tab now you see it's 31,050 for um Santa Clara agents cap is 33,000 so that means they only have a little bit left to pay on their cap and they are done so they pretty much capped in one deal but in, not everybody has a 3.4 million dollar listing so in that sense you just keep paying towards your cap think of it as a bank account you just keep paying money into it. And once you've hit that cap, then you get all of your money back, which is gonna be another example. The next one is capped at 100%. So you're capped, you're on 100% split with the office now, but you have a referral fee. This is what it will look like. On page one, you're gonna see for escrow, I use myself as the agent, you're gonna see for escrow, what the commission check should be broken down into. So they'll just write the checks or in our case, you know, the agent could get their money wired, whatever. And then on page two, you're gonna see the gross commission of 103,500. Then on the outside tab, that's where the commission, the referral commission comes off. It comes straight off the top. So that gets paid first then the splits come. So let's say you're still on a 70-30 because you haven't capped. Well, the 30% would come off the 77,625 because it's after the referral. So both, so the office and the agent are basically paid off of the gross commission after the referral fee is paid. And then that would be your leftover amount if you were capped. Now, if you are a capped agent, 
you see on the first page, all the money goes to you. And it's 100% goes right all to you. You get that check and I don't even blink an eye. It's all yours. Um, and then on page two, you'll see there's no deductions or anything. Um, so let me go to your questions. K-1s are used to distribute profits from private share. TRE is also, okay. Um, does TC provide an invoice normally? TCs um, don't provide an invoice um, necessarily. It's usually they you just know the fee and they just add it to your demand. If your client is paying for the TC fee, then the TCs have to provide an invoice to escrow directly. But your TCs should be the ones managing that um, to make sure that they get paid. But if you're paying for it, it would go, if you're looking on page two, there's on the right side towards the middle, there's a, a, a line item called deductions. That's where your TC fee would go. It's off of your check. So you see all the splits and everything comes off, then your net commission is totaled. So all your cost of sales is paid out. And so whatever's left over after that, is your check. So if you're paying deductions, that's coming out of your money. And that's why you have to 1099 your agents because we as an office are only 1099ing you off of all of the commission that the net commission, anything after that is all your responsibility. So you have to make sure you, you know, I got a lot of questions on, I, I got 1099 this amount, but my checks that I received in total are this amount. Yes, because you had deductions, you paid a TC over $4,000, you have to 1099 them. That's your responsibility because it came out of your money. So you wanna do that and your CPA should be able to 1099 um, them for you. Any questions? Oh, how do I submit it for tax deductions? Um, at the end of the year, me and Leslie give you a whole list of deductions. You get this pretty little packet. Um, I don't know how Leslie sets them up, but he, um, for my agents, as you know, you, you get a lovely little package. It has your 1099. It has your 911 CARES deductions. It has your all your list of deductions and um, your total like production spreadsheet to show all of your money where it went. And you want to take that sheet, that deduction sheet, and you want to go to your CPA and you want to tell him these were business expenses because they're line item. So I make it super easy for you. And if there's a TC, then you tell him I need a 1099 that that amount with that TC. So I basically track everything for you. If it's on your demand, it's being tracked for you and given to you at the end of the year. After your net income or your um, associate check, so after you receive your associate check, that gets deposited and now you need to track it for your CPA. So you should be tracking your business expenses after that. Okay. Build your future. So plan for your future with profit. Okay, so this, you guys are gonna have to stay with me now, okay? So now what you, we wanna figure out and calculate is what that you're gonna need to sell, okay? In units, how many units you're gonna need to sell in order to hit your net, um, net profit goal, okay? So in this case, I you have to flip the calculation backwards. So, and then I did another slide just to prepare you that flips it the right way. So it goes from top to bottom and you're gonna see, but just bear with me and I'm gonna give you this um, PowerPoint so you can go through it again to figure out your calculations and follow it, follow it. But I'm gonna just go with you right now to explain the calculations. So in order to figure out what your gross commission income needs to be, and the amount of units you need to sell in order to hit your net profit goal. Here's the calculation. So your net profit goal, let's say is $100,000. That's what you want to net profit. Your gross profit goal. So now you need to divide it by 60%. Why? Because 40% of your, your gross profit, this is remember after you get the associate check, 40% of that should be going to taxes. 
So you have to divide it by 60%. So you get 166,666. So then you wanna take out your cost of sales. Now I did not calculate referrals and I did not calculate if you're on a team. This is just your cap. So it's as basic, but 36,000, that's your royalty and your company dollar. So then you have to, what you're gonna add, so you're gonna add the 166,666 and you're gonna add it to the 36,000. So that should get you like 200 and something. Let me do it with you. Get out your calculators, people. I need to make sure you guys are doing this with me so you understand. So you're 166,000 and you're plusing it with the 36,000 cost of sales. So you get 202,666. But then you need to divide by 70%. Why? Because 30% of your gross commission goes to your expenses. So now you're going to divide it by 0.70. Come on, you stupid thing. And you're going to get a gross commission income of 289,522. So that's how much you have to gross. That means right after the, vo the sales volume, you get a 2.5% commission. This is what it has to total, 289,522. Not in one transaction in a year of 12 months. So that if you, our average sales price here in Santa Clara is one point, I think I did it at a 1.2 million, um, whatever our market center average was. So that means that's a associate net profit. So that's what they get is 21,000 they get in their hand after the cost of sales. They would have to do 14 units in order to hit the 100,000 with paying their expenses for their business, paying their cap and paying um, taxes on their money. Um, and so I calculated it. Now, if you take 40% of your net income goal, you get 100%, so 100,000. So this is now, this equation is now flipped. So now you have a total closed units needed is 14. Your gross commission income needs to be 289,522. You take out the cost of sales is 36,000. You take out your expenses that are budgeted, which is 86,856. Your net income total is 166,000. 40% of the taxes go out. Your net profit now is $100,000. Any questions? No. Nope. Okay. Can you show the previous slide for a second? I'll take a screenshot of it. Yeah, this one with the numbers. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So like, uh, like Rick, so this is what, how your financial should be structured if, if you wanna pay, if you're doing the 30, 30, 40. This is actually a little bit less than 40 because the 40% that's going toward your taxes is way too high. That percentage is way too high. I just, you're overly paying in taxes. But once you adjust it to like the 27% or 22% or whatever it is, you're actually gonna come out a little bit more than 40%. So just so you know. Best practices. That's gross, but it's the right way how a business is run. Exactly. Rick, that's, this is how it's supposed to be, okay? But remember, like if you did 27%, I think you actually end up getting like 120,000 or something, more than 120,000. So like I said, I over you're overly paying on taxes. All right, so now um, let's go through the little best practices to set yourself up for success. So gain clarity on your big life hopes and dreams. Set your personal and business budget. So I do this myself. I'm not teaching you anything that I don't apply for myself. I have my personal expenses that I track. I could show you that right now. And I have my business expenses that I track for all of my other businesses and rentals. So I know exactly how much needs to go towards those, those accounts. And I know exactly how much I need on a personal um, 
on a personal basis and I tie them all together to see exactly what I need to make every single year in order to make sure my lifestyle is comfortable for both my business and my personal. Um, set up your business entity. Um, just structure everything and keep everything separate. Like I said, you do not want to get audited and have everything commingled. I, I, I will pray for you if that happens. Um, open additional bank accounts for taxes, expenses, and other savings. Um, if you are somebody who, um, you know, it's, it's, it's normal. It's the world we live in. If you're somebody that doesn't manage money very well, I don't recommend having your expenses and your taxes in one bank account. Um, you might want to separate those so you don't overspend on expenses. You, you don't want to look at your bank account and say, oh, I have an extra like four, $5,000. Mm, no, because that's your tax money. And you might forget. And I say that because my husband does that all the time. He thinks there's more money than his, but he doesn't understand that that's all of our property taxes in there and stuff. So um, I would definitely separate those. And, you know, um, a big account like TechCU, um, I found when I did, me and Bob did our research, TechCU was probably the best one. And that's the one we chose for our business. So um, you could definitely look into them. Um, don't look into Wells Fargo. They have so many fees. That was like the worst one. Um, okay, so download and use the MREA chart of accounts. I give you that link and I will give it to you guys. So, so don't stress out about that. Purchase and download tax accounting software. You can use sim simple things as um, there's a app called um, Mint, mint.com. That's a super simple, straight to the point um, expense tracker. And it ties into your bank account for you. So it kind of already categorizes things. Um, and then it's an app so you can do things quickly and, and plug in your expenses right there. Um, if you're going to take this to the big level like I do, you definitely want to get QuickBooks. Um, you could do an online QuickBooks, I think for like 20 bucks a month, or just like me, I go to Costco and I buy this actual software. It's a one-time fee of like $250 and you just download it to your computer and you have your QuickBooks right there forever. And you don't have to keep paying every year. Um, but you definitely want to track your expenses or I've seen some agents just track it on a spreadsheet and they broke out their P&Ls monthly on tabs at the bottom. Um, do it on a spreadsheet. Whatever you do, you can, so it's easy because you save a lot of money by doing this when you give it to your CPA because everything's categorized. When you have them do it, they, I don't know if you noticed this, but they charge you more. So that's some advice. Hire an accountant and CPA or attorney. I have a referral for you in the next slide, but um, some of the top agents here like Yvette and Alan absolutely have a bookkeeper and CPA um, and Kenny Han. They all have accountants and bookkeepers that are tracking their stuff. So I recommend it, um, but I don't recommend it right in your first and second year, unless you're doing 15 plus units. Um, if not, it's manageable to do it yourself, or you can have your daughter do it or a child or your niece. I've seen that happen too. That's to save money because you know how I am with money. Um, set dates to calculate and pay your estimated taxes. So here's um, a few things that agents do. If you are consistently closing deals, I had an agent who was in their um, second year and they were consistently consistently closing deals. Um, and what they ended up doing is, is on, they had their schedule for taxes and on their commission check of a closing that was closing in a month that they needed to pay their bill, their tax bill, they actually were paying it as a deduction. So it was actually, I was, I was having escrow actually write checks for their taxes and they were just taking out their commission. So they don't even they don't even deposit it and attempted to spend the money, nothing. It just went straight from their commission. Um, I have agents who um, will split their their um, their commission and pay out monthly if that's a um, how they ended up scheduling it with the IRS and they'll pay it straight to the, the IRS straight from their commission, like I said, um, like the other person did. I have agents who will want separate checks and 
I could do it that way too, whatever it is to help you. But um, yeah, you could do it however you want. And prepare for your future insurance savings, all that good stuff. Um, you need to protect yourself on all costs. So you need to make sure you have a savings account so you can fund your business in case something happens. Here's an accountant and CPA services. So um, these are our preferred vendors here in our office. They've actually, if you've attended the classes, they've, they've done a few tax classes and um, they're also the same CPAs that we use here in this office and um, they, Alan Wang uses them. They're good friends of Alan Wang. So they do bookkeeping and they do um, your tax preparing. Um, here's a great example of a class. Uh, so Alan Wang um, actually helped me to join forces with money management educators, which really his friend is uh, Brent Aggie. He is our instructor for most of these classes. Um, Alan is very focused here at Santa Clara to make sure agents are focusing on their retirements and protecting their assets. And so with our series of classes with these people, they are going to be teaching our agents constantly on how to get their wills and trusts all together, um, how to insurances, um, how to save and set up a retirement account, all that good stuff. And everybody's more than welcome to join. Daily success habits. You should be doing this every day, which is the 10 contacts added, 10 conversations a day, 10 handwritten notes, and 10 home previews per week. But I know you probably can't do that right now. But you should still be doing your handwritten notes and your 10 conversations and 10 contacts a day. I am talking all the time to people. I'm even at Costco. Like I just actually I pulled an agent that um, is probably going to meet with Bob from Costco. So conversations work everywhere. Okay, so give me a few ahas. Well, let me answer Anna's question. I use self-employed QuickBooks app to track miles and snapshot receipts. That's great. That is a great idea. I would love to do that. Great, Anna. You go, girl. And then I'm about taxes taken out straight out of the commission. I, yeah. I, sounds awesome. Hey, the IRS. Right from there. Yeah. Works. Okay, any other ahas? No. I think the movie well, is a great idea. I thank you. I know I hook my agents up. They just don't know. I hook them up all the time. I have a few more other events, but yeah, you should are like I feel like agents should always be leveraging to vendors to offer everything that they can to try to save as much money as they can. Because at the end of the day, it's a win-win for us all. If the if like our Santa Clara office, when I put these events together, it's it's a win-win for us. You guys are happy. We're building relationships with you guys because you're here. And that's the whole point is retention. And on the back side, you guys are able to build a business and save money. And when you're making money and you have a lot of money, everybody's happy. So. And it's a tax write-off. <laughs> exactly. And the money goes to charity and it's a, or our foundation and it's tax deductible. So you can also take the, <laughs> that money and write it off. So I got you. listen. I hook my agents just don't know. I hook them up. <laughs> my aha uh -huh was that I need to make 150 percent more than I want to keep in my pocket. Pretty much. Yes. Yes. I think the biggest aha uh -huh that you should probably take away from here is that um, the worst thing, and where I, I remember I've managed thousands of agents new and to the biggest producers in Keller Williams and always 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 they say for taxes that can really ruin you quickly is because you're back paying the next following year you're back paying for the previous year and you're trying to catch up and get ahead I have one agent who just I mean he's so he isn't drowning in tax in taxes right now I mean, drowning. So you just really have to be very careful. So just pay it out and it hurts. It's going to really hurt, but just, just do it. It's going to hurt later. It's going to hurt regardless. So just do it. 
Um, Virginia, the date of the movie is April 24th. I'll be sending you guys all the information. I just got the flyer done. Is that something we can invite our sphere to or just for the agent? Yeah, you just have to be mindful that it's COVID. So we have to all go into the, the thing together because the movie theaters wants to make sure that not everybody's all over the place. And so we have to go in together. So we have to actually meet all outside. So whoever you invite, you just have to make sure that they know they have to be on time and they have to show up in front of the, the movie theaters um, to go in. If not, they won't be able to go in. How it's limited to a certain amount of people, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, 20 because 20 per theater and we have a couple of theaters and um, because they have to space people out. So it's COVID friendly and you keep your mask on and they'll sell, I think the vendor, uh, the concession stand, I think is open too. If I, I put all the information and details on the thing, you'll see it. Thank you. Um, yeah. And then I'm going through some of the other questions. Um, well, well, theater. Well, it sounds like that um, economic model, the, the spreadsheet. Yeah, I'm going to send you all of those. I'm okay. going to post them on all the group pages and email them out. Um, both Jackie and I will email them out. So you guys have them all because they're just cheat sheets. I mean, they make it super easy. I do all the heavy lifting for you with all the spreadsheets. So you don't have to do much. It's basically I'm leaving no excuses, people. No excuses. Anything else? No, it was awesome. Thank you. I think that's the most valuable information right now for new people, especially. Okay, good. And then if you guys, you know, um, let me see. Make sure, make your action plans so your success list. So what you you guys should be doing, which I do all the time. I could show you behind me. I don't know if you could see it. Oh, you can't because I have a background. There's a beautiful um, board, scrum board that Bob and I, uh, well, really Bob created. And it has all of our tasks and stuff. Action plans, action plans are key. Make sure you write down your action plans. I also track everything through a program, which is free. Because you know, I ain't paying for nothing it's free it's called asana and i i literally write down all my action plans and then the, my due dates because without a due date and a deadline it's never going to happen so and i assign my deadlines and i have a huge list because i don't want to forget about it so i throw it on my asana sheet and but make sure you guys are making your action plans don't just say you're going to do it write it down set a date and do it so not related to financial education, but um, this 10 handwritten notes keep com coming up. And I'm a little confused. Like, I would like to see an example of a handwritten note. Like, I'm not sure what, who to write it to and what to write in it. I know maybe it sounds silly, but I'm like, this is very basic. And I don't really understand what kind of written note I need to write and to whom I need to write it. OK, so there's um, handwritten note. Well, you could do a few things. There's handwritten notes where you could do something like wishing people a Merry Christmas, like Bruce did like 800 cards. I mean, not that many, but he did a lot of Christmas cards. You could do handwritten notes that's considered a handwritten note, or you could do birthdays, or you could do um, things like you see on Facebook, right? You see someone just had a baby. Like I just did it. I follow everything you guys are following. I just do it for my agents and my agents know that. You get a call from me, you get text messages from me, you get in handwritten notes from me. And you know, Carrie Chen, one of our agents just had a baby. I sent a handwritten note. So um, you could do all kinds of things like that or happy anniversary from when you they first closed their deal. So, you know, the, if you close a transaction today and same time next year, can write a handwritten note, you know, congratulating them on their anniversary of buying a home. You could do um, follow-up calls. Once you've made the calls and it was a great call, you could send them a handwritten note, thanking them for their time or their meeting, right? Um, Cause you're always trying to ask for referrals, you know? So if there's anybody else that you know that would need my services or my expertise, you know, 
then please let me know. It's, you're always asking for referrals. So it's just another way for you to acknowledge them, thank them, and also ask for referrals. Okay. I mean, I could go for days. It's like, <laughs> there's all kinds of things you can write a handwritten note for. You could say, you know, if it's your neighbors, you know, handwritten, do a handwritten note and say how great their flower bed is. And just say, you know, I am your real estate expert, neighborhood real estate expert, you know, and it's hopefully one day I can meet you once COVID is better, you know, but for now, here's, if you need me or you need any services, here's my contact information. I mean, you could do all kinds of handwritten notes. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Um, any other questions? Any other, you know, I have, I have ideas for days. So anybody else need like any ideas? I have those for a day. If you guys are looking to do like vents or retention things or like the handwritten cards or conversation, whatever, excuses to call people, Facebook posts, I have it. I've done it all. I need excuses to call, call, to call people. <laughs> you know, referrals on vendor, you know, Anna just asked me for a vendor yesterday for a photographer. I've been sending her all kinds of people like, here's a discount, here's this, here's that. <laughs> I am very resourceful. So anybody need anything? Going once, going <laughs> twice, okay. All right, well, I'm gonna cut this very short because I know you guys got a lot of calls to make and a lot of contacts to add to your database. So I'm gonna let you guys go do that. And I will send out, um, like I said, the links to all those spreadsheets and this PowerPoint so you can have it and you can look over it more in depth. If not, then I'm gonna assume everybody's all good. And, I'm, and um, please, if you're a Santa Clara agent, Feel free to do your budgets and your P&Ls and set up a consultation with me and we can go over them and I can help you figure things out or even ways to save money. Um, and then if you want to go over the economic model and all and the organizational model and all that, Bob does that for future self um, for the Santa Clara agent. So you feel free to schedule an appointment with him also um, to do that. Okay. Thanks, team. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you guys later. Thank you.